So tell me when you first came across Senator Bitter. Um, I got a phone call and I was told to report to work and so I came to work and Jonathan says, I have a call for you. And I said, okay. He said, but it's going to be in-call because we did in-call and out-call. Jonathan did all the screening. He used different techniques to screen the calls. He used preferred 411. He would, you know, at the hotels, he would do the cross-reference check at the hotels just to make sure that it wasn't cops or whatever, however he did it. But this one, it came across his caller ID as Louisiana State Office. And um, he said, um, I have a gentleman coming to see you. After the call was done and over and Bitter left, he looked at me and he said, do you realize who you just seen? And I said, no. He goes, that was your local state representative, Mr. David Bitter. And at that time, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, who, who cares, you know? And then as it became a process of a two to three times a week, then it was, you know, very, you know, it became very intimate and, you know, he and I became very intimate. Okay. Um, so what year was this? This was in 98. Okay, 98. Uh, yeah, early 98. Okay, that's the first contact. Correct. Um, so it's interesting because, you know, and, and you said you became intimate. In a Times Picking Union article uh, that I read, it said that you guys, that you two didn't really become intimate. You said it was business as usual. That must have been from Kate. Okay. That's who wrote the article, correct? All right. And who is Kate? Yeah, she was the article person who wrote the article. She, um, everything that she wrote, she wrote what she wanted to write. She didn't write my words. Okay. Yeah, this is actually Brendan McCarthy. Oh, that, Brendan. Okay. Yeah, that wrote that. But uh, it said, uh, it said, uh, you, Yao contacted uh, three relatives at the time speaking on Wednesday and said Bitter was a regular customer of hers, but said but she said, you, that you did not have a personal romantic relationship. So is that... Yeah, that is not true. I never said that. Okay. That, 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 is never, that has never been this situation. I mean, that has been... It's always been that he and I did have a very personal romantic relationship. And um, tell me about that. Tell me how that unfolded. Our relationship? Yeah. Um, I mean, did he, you, you make contact for the first time, you have mm -hmm. sexual liaison, does he immediately come call back for you, you know, the next week? or um, it... Two days later. Two days later? Two days later. I saw him two days later, and then um, it was a repetitive thing for about three to four weeks, and then it was, okay, we can't be here no more, you know, and then he rented one, well, he didn't rent, it was in my name, I rented a place directly across the street from where the calls were done and it was he had his own set of keys he knew that's where he could come and see me whenever he wanted to um, his 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 guy friend Brett would come you know they would just you know they they would come there was a coat rack by the front door David knew he could hang his jacket he could come there at two o'clock in the morning and he knew that he could come at two o'clock in the morning and there would be nobody else there that there was nothing he had to worry about you know that was a very personable relationship for for a while you know and it was reported for a while that it was only you know four to six months now that's what hustler wanted to write mm -hmm. our relationship was much longer how long um it ended in mid i was six months pregnant whenever we ended our relationship what happens after what happens at the end towards the end of the relationship? What what caused the relationship to end? Um I found out I was pregnant and um he had asked me very plainly, you know, am I the father? And I kinda of flipped out on him because he's the only person I've been sleeping with. Um and when I was asked to have an abortion, it kinda of threw me who asked you to have the abortion? He, he did. did. So you came, so you weren't having sex with anyone else at the time? No. Not a boyfriend or anyone no. else? And at what, so at what point did you guys stop having unprotected sex? Then? Oh goodness, when I moved into the house across the street. And did he request that or did you? What, of the unprotected sex? Yeah. It just happened. 
So it wasn't a it wasn't a conscious decision. It was just right. A, it just kind of happened. Passionate moment. Right. So you approached him and told him you're you were pregnant at how how far into the uh, pregnancy? I was 16 weeks pregnant when I found out. Okay. Which is I was four months pregnant, and him and I quit seeing each other when I was six months pregnant. And that was his decision to quit seeing you. Correct. Um. What happened uh, at that point? Um. I just, you know, I knew that if I had the baby, that the life for the child and myself would be completely unmanageable. We would never live a normal life. And so at eight months, I decided to give the baby up for adoption and never speak of it again. Okay. Um. So you, you went through an adoption agency or you just... Yes, everything was legal. Everything was legal, sealed, no, no ifs, ands, or buts. All the, all the T's were crossed, all the I's were dotted. It was a legal adoption. Um, I don't want, nor ever do I have wanted the child's life to ever have to go through the hell that it would have went through. We, how did you tell him? Did you tell him face to face? Did you tell him on the phone? How I told him face to face. And what was his immediate reaction? Oh, uh, it's not mine. Denial? Absolutely denial. Did he ever accept responsibility for it? No. He completely denied it. Though. Absolutely. But then he asked you to have an abortion. Yes. He asked you to have an abortion? Absolutely. And but you can sit there, walk across a grassy knoll, holding your wife in your children's hand, screaming family values. But you want me to go aboard my baby. And you didn't do that because you, you have religious beliefs regarding abortion, or is it just personal beliefs? Or? It's personal beliefs. I believe I'm woman enough to lay down and spread my legs. I'm woman enough to make the right decision. Child that has to be brought into this world. You know, I, I don't believe in, in that whatsoever. That, that's just disgusting to me. What you're saying is that basically there was a safe house that Correct. was set up personally for him? No, personally for myself. It was my apartment. Okay, so were you seeing other clients, or were you just seeing him there? No, I would only see him. I mean, whenever he and I, when it was, it was just he and I. You know, there was no other, because I didn't want, I guess in my own little fantasy world, you know, that was my, that was my boyfriend, you know. Nobody else, you know, not knowing the, the shit that he was doing. You know, not only me. Where, where was this location? It was on Dolphin and Dumain, in downtown New Orleans. Okay. Right outside the French Quarter. Was that right next to where the Quarter Scene restaurant used to be? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, at that time, it's no longer there. Right. No longer there. Um, okay. So did he um, did he contact, when he wanted to see you, would he contact you directly or would he go through Jonathan? Um, at first, he would go through Jonathan and then it would be directly me. You know, when once I moved across the street, you know, once I got everything set up over there, it would be, it was directly through me. Okay. Now, you said he would also show up with uh, another guy. Uh, you said Brett or Brent? Brent. It was, his, it was his, I guess his associate, his friend, his buddy, his driver, whatever you want to call him. Brent Fuhrer was yes. his name? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, was there, how was money exchanged? How did that work out? Um, at first, he would pay Jonathan. You know, he would give Jonathan a service fee. And then behind closed doors, he would give me my money. Um, and then whenever I moved across the street, of course, you know, I got an allowance every month. And that was to pay the bills. And, you know, for me, whatever I wanted. Okay. So did you, did you get your allowance from Jonathan or did you get it from No, I got it directly from David. You got it directly from David? Yes. How, how did he pay you? Cash? In cash, yes. Okay. Oh, approximately how much would he pay? Uh, he, I, he would, I would get five thousand dollars a month. Five thousand a month. Mm -hmm. uh, did he uh, the, the safe house? Was he paying the rent on that safe house? Yes. He was paying it uh, to Jonathan or directly to the landlord. To me. To you. That was in, that was included in my allowance. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, did he ever give you any gifts? Mm -hmm. What 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 did he give? Um, for one of my birthdays, he gave me this ring. Okay. The ring you have on right now? The ring I have on right now. 
I've kept it for many years. Not just because he gave it to me, because I just I'm, I like antique jewelry. Anything else that he gave? You? Um, he gave me a I had a necklace. Um, I think there's pictures of me in it um, in one of the Houston photos. It's a um, black onyx and diamond pin drop necklace. Um, I have on a black jumpsuit. Um, when my hair was real short in Houston, I was on my way to a James Blunt concert. And, um, I saw him just before the concert and he gave it to me, he told me he wanted me to wear it. And where was this again? In Houston. In Houston. Mm -hmm. So you see him in other places outside of the, this New Orleans safe house, right? Absolutely. I've seen him up until 2000 and right before 2007, before it all came out. So I was in contact with him. You were in contact. So, uh, okay. So, um, so th there's no question that at the beginning of this relationship, it, it wasn't just, you know, favors and gifts. This was originally money for sex. Correct. And he knew that. Correct. Okay. Do you know if he was seeing any other, any other girls at the time? I did not know, but I do know now. In my mind, I didn't want to know. I wanted to think I was the only one, but he was seeing several, several other girls. Do you know any of those other girls? Um, I don't know them personally. I know that he had seen some girls through Jeanette Mayer service. In the um, Hustler interview, there was, a, there was a situation where they said that, where you stated that he would take his condom after having sex, put it in a trash bag, and then take it out. Um, is that correct? Or take it out of the room? Is that true? Um, he did that once or twice. That um, he took the condom. But that was not in every, no, that's not a true, a, a full-fledged true statement. Hustler printed what they wanted to print to sell immediate. And you have to figure, this article was done in 2007. I was on the stands January 2008. I mean, they did the article, printed it, and sold it within three months. And so the interview that's on YouTube if you listen to it, it's chopped 10 ways a Sunday. Um, they printed what they wanted to print to sell. Yeah, it's highly edited. Very, uh, very highly, and poorly uh, edited yeah, at that. I, 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 I did listen to that more than once. Um, the, um, the, 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 did, did you tell them the information? I mean, did you tell them about the pregnancy? Did you tell them about this? Other I stuff? told Mark Johnson everything. Mark Johnson, a reporter. Yes, he was, the, he was the, um, the guy who I spoke with, who no longer works for Hustler. Um, because I even contacted Mr. Flint's office a couple of months ago um, pertaining this, you know, because they never even, um, Hustler, I, I was exclusive, supposed to be exclusive with them, mm -hmm. and um, whenever my daughter was approached by some guy, he set, went, to her jo went to her job and sat there and waited for her, um, when, when she involved my children, the mama in me comes out, and um, I was ready to attack. And so I knew I was all exclusive with a hustler, and I signed an agreement with hustler that I was all exclusive. And I wanted to know what my legal boundaries were, and they couldn't even answer me that. Um, nor, nor did I get that satisfaction or the, the, get the decency of a phone call of saying, this is what we can do for you, this is how we can help you. He did, uh, he did claim that he never had a relationship with you? Absolutely. What did, when you heard that, what did you think? It made me sick. It made me feel less than, you know, because I know, you know, my lie detector test proves it all, you know. I challenged him. He refused to take a lie detector test. I took it. I took it, one of, the, one of the best lie detector administrators in the United States gave me the test. David Vitter refused. You know, I'm the one who can't live a normal life today because of him. You know, yeah, it was my actions and I did crazy shit and, you know, we had whatevers, but I'm the bad person. Why isn't he a bad person? because he doesn't admit to it. <laughs> you know, I can't get a normal job. 
I can't go to my hometown. My children, you know, my daughter, she can't even go to work without having somebody come bother her at work about it. If you have one thing to say to David Vitter <laughs> now, at this, at this point in your life, looking back in hindsight, what would you say? Why? Why me? Why lie? Why go on national TV and pull a Bill Clinton? You know, be honest. Who cares what you did? You know, you're a man. You're a human. We all make mistakes. Hold yourself accountable for your own actions. You know, don't... Don't harm people who... who don't deserve it. I have lupus, you know, and I'm dying. I've came to acceptance with that. You yeah. have, wait, explain that to me. You, you, you have a sickness at the moment? Yes, I do. How, I, long, how long have you had uh, lupus? Um, since um, June of 2011. That's when you discovered you had it? Yes. And it's, it's not curable? There is no cure for lupus. Okay, so what do you do? Are you going through treatment at the moment? Um, I manage, I'm in treatment, yes. I go through treatment. I, um, I take 11 pills a day, four injections a week. Um, I live. You know, the better whatever, but the, the warmer the client, the better, uh, the warmer, listen to me, the warmer the client. The warmer the client, the climate, the better I am because it's, with lupus comes rheumatoid arthritis. And the rheumatoid arthritis is, you know, deterioration of your joints. And it's easier for me being in warm weather than it is cold weather. Um, right now my spleen is pulling the platelets from my liver. Um, my brain, the right side of my brain, the frontal lobe, I have 64% functionability in the right frontal lobe. The lower lobe, I have 16% decrease in functionability. Um, I've started having seizures. Um, I had a seizure six weeks ago to where I was driving my vehicle and told with my vehicle.